Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Culture Magazine. And today we've got a special guest. Do you want to introduce yourself? My name is Jody Jones. I'm 23 years of age and I play for Coventry City Football Club. Nice. So yeah, today we're just going to find out more about Jody himself, uh, his football career and also his clothing line. So yes, first question. Um, what was your childhood like? My childhood? Um, it was okay. Um, Mum and Dad did a lot for me, so obviously I appreciate them mm -hmm. so much. Growing up in a rough area as well, I grew up in both in East London. Mm -hmm. and, um, obviously you probably know what that's like, um, next to places like Hackney, places mm -hmm. like that. But yeah, I just used to, I've always loved football mm -hmm. and obviously clothing as well. I've always liked to kind of dress a little bit different um, and just try different things, you know. So obviously yeah, I was just used to just hang around with friends and stuff. Um, my mum was single for obviously a long time, so it was mainly her looking after me. Obviously she was working hard, mm -hmm. doing that late shifts and stuff, so I used to have like a child minor and stuff like that. But yeah, like I said, just, just quite, quite a normal childhood. Mm -hmm. hard, hard at times, but, but better than some people as well, so I appreciate it. Yeah, 100%. So what was like your school life? Um, primary school, high school? I went to a primary school called Oldfield Primary School. Probably about ten minutes from my house. A lot of my friends went there, so it was just it was quite it was quite a chill primary school. Didn't really have to wear no uniform or anything like that. You can just no one believe me when I say that, but you can just go in and what you want, just have fun and whatever. And obviously, went on to secondary school. And I went, on, I went to a school called uh, Bishop Chalana. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it was a sports school and Catholic school together. Is that your students? Yeah, it is. Yeah, obviously, uh, it was like a boys' school and a girls' school. So it was mixed, but at the same time, we didn't have lessons with girls. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why they did that, but they probably just wanted to keep us away. But yeah, I went to there. It was a good school. A um, few problems, obviously, just that there were so many different areas mm -hmm. in that school, which just caused loads of problems. And obviously, if you, even if you weren't involved in a lot of stuff, you get caught up in it just mm -hmm. because you're from a certain area. So I was trying to stay out of the way, you know, um, just, just play football. Everybody knew me for football and for just being. Just being a nice guy, you know, so. Of course. So that leads me to my next question. When was the time when you realised football was your passion? When did it hit you like, oh my day, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life? When you're young, you don't really think like that. Mm -hmm. So, I've always loved football. If you mention my name to anybody, they'll just say football. That's mm -hmm. it. Like, I've always loved football. And it kind of helped where I grew up because mm -hmm. it's just cages and just playing locally on the street. Mm -hmm. I think that's what helped me being a good football player. I, I had the talent, but it just made me better playing with growing up in a rough area, playing against older boys as well. Mm. It was always rough, so I was prepared and I was just always prepared for stuff like that. But I'd probably say when I was in, when I was in secondary school, like when I was younger, I was at teams like Arsenal, Chelsea, teams like that. So, yeah. But you don't think at that age, you're just enjoying it, you know what I mean? So I think in secondary school, I think when I kind of got told that I was going to get given a pro contract early, that's when I thought, like, you know, this. Like, oh, wow, so you got the tour in secondary school? Yeah, I was told when I. Um, I forget how old you are in secondary school. I was in about year 10, I think, when it year happened. 10, I think you're 14. Something yeah, like that. 14. Well, obviously, you're not allowed to have a pro contract mm. until a certain age. I think I was maybe 15 when, they, when, 15. when, I, when I kind of knew that I was going to yeah. be getting it without it being official. And I think on a Monday, I was allowed to leave school to go and do training. Mm. So I felt like I started feeling like I was a bit special yeah. me, because I was allowed to leave school and stuff like that. And yeah, that's, that's kind of when I knew it was serious. But even then, when I, when, I, when I did get my pro contract and stuff, after training, I'd come home and just chill. Mm. I just chill with them and then like every day, because that's all you want to do, you know what I mean? You just want to be with your friends, even if it's trouble going on. Like, I just wanted to be with my boys and yeah. sometimes we'll do stuff that we shouldn't be doing. But then, like I said, I ended up getting that pro contract and I was still doing that was kind of chilling and stuff like that but then when I got that move to Coventry everything just changed because I wasn't there no more. Okay so you said you got that pro contract in secondary school what was it like did you get scouted did like in the game? So like I said I, I played for so many teams when I was younger mm. but I was just not 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 confident that like I knew I was good at football but yeah. when I went to Arsenal and Chelsea there were boys that was there before me Okay. And obviously they were more confident than me, they were more settled in and like I was more nervous so I couldn't really be myself and I didn't like that so 
ended up just coming away from teams like that. I just played for my school team because my school team was good enough anyway. Yeah. At the time anyway, and um, I played like local for my, for my district, my borough. And then a few of my friends played for Dagenham and Redbridge, there was in League 2 at the time. And they just told me to come along. It's like, it's like, there's no way you can't be playing football, you have to come. I ended up going there and I just from there I just ended up doing well. Nothing. Yeah, but obviously everybody was surprised because everybody expected me to play for like a big team. And when I went to Dagenham and Redbridge, I was like, why are you going there? I just said, I just want to be happy and enjoy myself. Like, it's too much pressure like, at a young age as well, like playing for a big team. Yeah. And then what I did by going to Dagenham ended up being the best thing. And everybody that was at that like, Arsenal, Chelsea, teams like that, they wish they started from the bottom like me because they gradually come down. Come down yeah. Because it's so hard to play for a team like that. Literally, maybe one player like, end up staying there. But everybody comes down, but if you start at the bottom, you make your way up. Keep, yeah, you keep going, it makes sense. I mean, I don't know a lot about football, but yeah. Um, now you play for Coventry uh, professionally. How do you find that? Um, I'm living my dream, you know, so mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a blessing every day. Um, just getting up and going to training, I don't take it for granted. And um, Like I said, it's just not every child's dream, but a lot of boys want to be professional football players. So like I said, I don't take it for granted. Uh, it's a great feeling. I've been living here for about four and a half years now, so it kind of feels like home to me. Yeah. Um, at first I struggled because I missed London so much, but now, like I said, I've been living here for, for quite long, so it's just, it's just a good feeling every day waking up as a professional football player. Okay. So just to find out the history before you got scouted for Coventry, how did it start and how old were you? Um, I started playing football basically just as soon as I could walk. Like I was always kicking a football around the house, or even if I was going anywhere, I'd always take a football with me. So I think I started playing for a team when I was about six. Mm -hmm. Played for a local team in London called Simrad. A lot of people will know who they are. Um, a lot of ex-professional football players have played for them. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like just just from playing for them, I just had a lot of interest in me straight away. Like I said, to you with Arsenal, Chelsea, West Ham, yeah. teams like that, and then. Like I said, I tried a few out. I, was at, I think I was at Arsenal for about a year. I was at West Ham and Chelsea for maybe half a year. Mm -hmm. And I just, like I said, it was, it was a nice feeling to be able to play for a team like that, but I just weren't enjoying it. And I think it was a good thing that I was able to speak up at that age and actually say like I'm not having fun. Yeah, because it's easy to just sit and go through the motions and just be like, oh, I'll play for Arsenal anyway. And the pressure on that image exactly. they yeah. And like I said, just at that age, the, pre the pressure that I get off of my manager now, and I'm and I'm 23 years old, mm -hmm. like he's, he would speak to me like a man and put pressure on me, which is normal. It was like that when I was at Arsenal when I was younger. Yeah. So obviously, just having someone shouting at you and stuff like that, it just, it just weren't enjoyable. But like I said, I just ended up, I just took some time off, just played football for fun. And then, like I said, my friend ended up mentioning to me about Dagen and Redbridge, so I went over there. And it's probably the best thing I've ever done because I've done so well over there that I got told about my pro contract early mm -hmm. and then I ended up playing with like men. I was about 16, 17, I was playing with 30 year old men oh, like yeah. every week. So it was a good thing for me and then it just helped me learn. And then after that, playing for them every week, I had a lot of interest again and I ended up choosing to come to Coventry. And what age was that, sorry? Um, I think I was 18. 18? About 18, yeah. And you're 23 now? Yeah. So that's, if we're not on that, right, five years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you say you enjoy playing for Coventry, you feel comfortable, happy? Yeah, I love it. Uh, obviously, at first, it's just a, it's a new challenge, so... Yeah. It's just... It, I remember when I first got told about it, I was I was upset that I was actually leaving London, mm. when really I should have been happy that I was coming to such a big team like Coventry. Yeah. So when I came at first, I was just nervous, but I'm, I'm settled in now. Like I, like I said to you, I love it here. The fans, like, they're so supportive to message me every single day mm. and to just, just tell me how much I'm loved here and, yeah, I'm just comfortable here. I, I love it here. That's nice to hear. So you said your biggest challenge was moving from London to here. Mm. What is it that you miss about London? Is it friends, family? Friends and family, man. I just said it. Yeah. <laughs> Answering your question, yeah. hundred percent, man. Like, obviously, as a young boy growing up in London, I was playing football on the streets every day. I was with my mates every day. I went yeah. to the same primary school and the same secondary school as my mates. Like sometimes you split up like after primary school. But I was with them throughout all them years. We don't live far from each other, probably mm -hmm. like five minutes from each other as well. So I was with them every day. And 
especially like my mum as well because my mum had me when she was I think she was about 16 had me so young so me and my mum have always been so tight and it was just like me and her all the time living together so just having to leave her as well just knowing that she was going to be on her on her own like kind of kind of hurt me a bit as well because like she used to come home to me every day and stuff like that so she was used to that so it was going to be different for not just me but it was playing playing an effect on on my family as well Mm -hmm. so yeah just just not seeing them every day and coming up here and just you know, being in a hotel by myself, like, it just killed that, me. Yeah. So now do you find a balance, like, to see your friends but can't see them? Yeah, when I first came, like I said, like, we have a day off on a Wednesday and a Sunday. Mm-hmm. Like, I would go back every Tuesday and Saturday night, yeah. which is kind of silly because you're only going to be back for one night and mm-hmm. then I've got to rush back up. So I was going back as much as possible. And then my family just ended up saying to me, like, you can't keep doing that because you're going to be tired, you won't be, like, ready for training it's a lot, yeah. yeah but like like i said i just missed everybody so much so i just used to go back as much as possible but now i barely go back like if my family or i want to see my family or they want to see me they'll come up here it's mm-hmm. like it's only an hour on the train but of course and my family to be honest they don't really like me going back to london because of stuff that goes on in my area and stuff like that so which makes sense but yeah like i said they come up to me now and it's, it's nice up here because it's, it's something new as well you know of course they get to explore currently exactly and yeah. also now we've got social media so you can face on and zoom yeah, there's ways to keep in contact um also to ask you what keeps you motivated so obviously before your matches before training what gets you pumped um just my love for the game really the fans like how much it means to the fans like Coventry have got such a good fan base um mm. Yeah, just everybody in my family really as well, just because even the people that are new in my family mm-hmm. or my family that I still speak to that have known me from since I was born, they, they know my passion and, and my love is for football. So, And I know that I have a chance of like, changing their lives and, 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 and that being the one person in my family that's... Obviously everybody's doing well, everybody's like, doing whatever they're doing, got their own job and stuff, but knowing I have a chance and... Just one, to one, make a big difference. To make a big difference, yeah. exactly. Yeah, to the words out of my mouth. It's just I can never give up, and it just motivates me every single time. Yeah, that is so nice because obviously when you wake up, you need something to push you. Exactly. And that's your push. Um, yeah. So you already said about your challenges. Do you have any? Um, obviously, the biggest challenge was you moving to London. But any like physical challenges, like sometimes you, that you have in the morning. Um, I've had a few injuries. Injuries. What injuries are those? Um, <laughs> it's, it's called an uh, ACL injury. And I've had it uh, on both of my knees now, and mm-hmm. once it happens, I think maybe 20 years ago, or maybe more, that was like a career-ending injury. But now, because they're so smart and the technology, whatever they do, yeah. they know how to fix it. It happens probably to like at least one footballer every yeah, day. Because, you know? you know, when you were younger, there was a joke that guys used to say, I yeah. could have made a pro, but I don't know. Yeah. And I swear, <laughs> yeah. that's, it sounds silly, but that's yeah. one thing that used to like kill me as well, because I was thinking, I can't be that guy. I was just going to say to everyone that I was good, you know, but... I couldn't make it professional. And then all the girls were like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one there, but yeah. I had that a couple of times. That killed me, like, mentally. Mm -hmm. I was struggling a lot. I was in a bad place. I was injured because it's it's like a nine-month process. Yeah. Because after about five months, you feel like you can play, but you you can't because you you need to get stronger and strengthen your knee and stuff like that. So other than moving from London, I'd probably say... They were my hardest obstacles and that probably harder than moving from London. 100 percent And you're 23, I've got friends that are like 24, they've had like knee injuries to the point now they can't play. Yeah. So you've been lucky to say like you're still you're still playing so Exactly, yeah, that's so uh, like I said I'm blessed, I'm lucky that I've got to go to such a such a good um such a good person that could operate on my knee. Of course. He's like one of the best guys in Europe, so I was confident when I went to him and he's just literally I'm i I'm literally I'm about maybe a month away from playing so mm. I'm just recovering from one now and like I said yeah I'm blessed that I can still actually play football after this. Yeah. You know what's great sometimes it's good to rest. So some things happen thinking oh what's this happening to me but yeah. gossip we just rest. Exactly. And then when you're ready you're back um, on your feet. Yeah so um I want to know an interesting fact about you either a hobby or what, what you do when uh, you just want to relax and chill. I know sometimes you go to London but is there any hobbies that interest that you got? Um like I said, I love football, man. I watch, <laughs> now the Euros on, I watch football every single day. Like, I've not missed a game. Um, I used to play PlayStation quite a lot, but yeah. I've kind of not grown up because 
my dad's 40 and he still plays PlayStation, but yeah. they can play at any age, you know what I mean? But I, I, I kind of stopped playing that when I got injured because I just wanted to focus on coming back. Yeah. But obviously the clothing brand, I've always wanted to do it. I've always been into clothes. I've, I've, I've spent so much money on clothes and trainers. Mm. And my friends have always said to me, why don't you start your own clothing brand? So they said it to me about three years ago. One of my good friends said it to me. I was just like, no, I need to focus on football. And just that like, I can do it later on. But since when I got injured, mm -hmm. it was a perfect time for me to do it. Okay, no reason to answer the question, but I was just going to ask you, when did that come across? Yeah. So when you got injured, that's when you got the motivation to, oh, yeah. can I actually start mm -hmm. this? Yeah, because obviously, like I said, I wanted to do it for, for ages. Mm -hmm. but I still, I did have time because I'm not training for the whole day. But when I come in from training, I'm tired. Yeah. But obviously, I knew I had a nine-month period where I was going to be off. So not off, but like not training. So mm -hmm. I thought, you know what, I might as well try it now. So I was there for ages, thinking of a name, thinking of like what sort of clothes I'm going to go for, and then finally came up with a name for Leechy London because mm -hmm. obviously I grew up in London, and then. Um, my, my, my middle name is Jody J. Felici Jones and I just thought okay. obviously Felici it just it sounds a bit cool you know like it's yeah. a bit catchy so and I just thought I'd add London on the end I'll be honest when I first saw it I pronounced it Felice yeah everybody does, everybody <laughs> I'm, does. I'm not pronouncing it right yeah. so it's Felici yeah it's Felici and obviously when I spoke to my dad at first because his name's Jay Felici mm. I said to him say if people like think it says Felice and yeah. that's why it's got, you know, it's got, 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 yeah, I was going to say, yeah. it should have had um, a French thing, wouldn't you? Yeah, call it? well, if I don't even know what it's called, but I was researching it and I knew that that made it pronounced as the, yeah, yeah I was on like Google Translate and they're trying to, trying to sort it out. See, when I looked at it, I looked on um, Instagram, so I didn't see the accent, yeah, the okay, accent. Yeah, so it's yeah. Felici. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, for everyone that's watching, it's Felici. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was, you just, I, you answered my question, I was going to ask you, how um, did the name come? You said it came from your middle name and yeah. your dad's name as well. Yeah. Uh, and how did the clothing like design, how did um, inspiration, how did that come across? Like I said, I've always tried to dress a little bit different. Yeah. And nowadays, a lot of people, well, maybe we don't, like us not here, but a lot of people like kind of slim fit clothes. Yeah. And I see a lot of people wearing slim fit and obviously the oversized kind of baggy clothes have started to come back in now. But yeah. like I said, maybe three years ago, I just think everybody was wearing slim clothes. and. I still kind of was wearing kind of baggy clothes then. Some mm -hmm. people used to like laugh at me and say like, what are you wearing? And then people now, I see them wearing that, them sort of clothes. So like I said, this tracksuit I have on now is like an oversized tracksuit. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not too baggy, but it's just, just loose. it's like a nice loose yeah. fit, yeah. So that's the sort of clothes that I wanted to go for, but then it's not like that. You can't just get it like that, it's a long process. I think I waited about five months for this tracksuit. Mm -hmm. I had to wait for the tracksuit to come in stock in Portugal. Mm -hmm. And then I had to think of a logo, I've got a few different logos, like this hat I've got on now is a different logo to this. And it's just it's just a lot of thinking. You have to sit down and just say, listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna take an hour out of my time and literally like go hard and, and just think of loads of different ideas because you can easily get distracted. Of course. Um, and obviously there's a lot of brands at the minute that are trying to make it like clothing brands. Yeah, of course. What do you think makes yours different, like stand out? Um the name because yeah. it means a lot to me, so it's my family name um, and then obviously having London on the end is it just reminds me of my childhood mm -hmm. and the stuff I've been through growing up obviously there's a lot of um, a lot of clothing brands out there that are, that are very good as well yeah. um, but what makes it different, like I said, is just the name, it means a lot to me it's not just a name that I just thought sounded cool mm -hmm. or it's just not It's not a name that I went on Google and translated it from English to French or yeah, exactly. Italian like, it actually means a lot to me and I think it helps that I'm a football player, that I know a lot of other football players that can promote my clothes and stuff yeah. like that and like I said I've always been into clothes so and it's always a backup as well you know because you never know that a football, football career is not as long as people think so yeah. it's like nice to have you stable income exactly yeah, yeah. like I said um, and with my football income as well it helps me a lot to be able to buy loads of samples yeah. and stuff like that so yeah it's, it's, it's a good it's a good feeling so if you think it wasn't for football you still do the clothing but like if it wasn't for you having an in injury would you still could have gone ahead and done it i would have done it i just don't know when i would have done yeah. it though. it's just i think the injury this is why i just kind of said to myself everything happens for a reason yeah, like here's, here's a here's a good time to actually try and do something else you know because if it didn't happen i would have just kept playing football football until I'm maybe retired when i'm like 30 plus and then i'm be like, you know, like what am i going to do now mm -hmm. so that's why i said everything happens for a reason so when i got injured 
he gave me a chance to set up a little backup. Mm -hmm. And how did you start the process? Like, what was the first thing? Did you sit down and draw anything? Did you research? I remember I was sitting in bed and I was just literally thinking of names. And I couldn't think of a name. I just thought, this is long, man. <laughs> I, I can't even think of a name. Like, how am I going to do this? And then, just, I forgot how it came around. Um, I forgot how it came around, but it just ended up going to Felici. As soon as I said, as soon as it was Felici London, I thought, mm. yeah, this is going to be yeah. And I said it to a few of my boys, and they said, no, that sounds hard, black. I reckon it will do well. And I just thought, yeah, from this, I'm, I'm not stopping now. I'm probably going to go yeah. for it. Yeah. Okay, so going back to your um, design. So I'm looking at your um, tracksuit. The quality looks really good. What is your name? Sorry, or who is your biggest inspiration when it comes to like designer? So what do you wear a lot? Um, so I get quite a few free bits off of Nike. Obviously, mm -hmm. Nike is just pretty simple. Everybody yeah. knows Nike, but day to day, I love Nike, and obviously I'm at football nearly every day, so I don't really have a chance to. I've got all these clothes at these Dior trainers at home, but honestly, like, I probably, this is probably the first time. Oh, Dior trainers? It's probably oh, like, <laughs> whoa, sorry. No, it's probably like the first time I've worn these in like a month, because like I said, it's, I love stuff like this, but at the same time, it's pointless me getting stuff like this, because especially with COVID, like, we haven't been able to go anywhere, but Christian Dior, I love Christian Dior, mm -hmm. um, Gucci, I like Gucci a lot, especially like their bags and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And then just something pretty simple like that, really. Like, I like, and Palm Angels as well. Like, I like that too. Yeah. I think, yeah, I know Palm Angels. So, when you were like um, in the process of designing your uh, clothes, did you make sure like the quality was good? Because obviously, it's important. You don't want to put stuff in the wash and the clothes are like, course, yeah, course. really cool. Like I said, that's why. So, it took me about eight months to get my first piece of clothing mm -hmm. that I actually wanted to put on the market because I've got so many things washed and coming out of death. And then some things have turned up and I was just like, that doesn't even look good. But for example, this tracksuit here, this is my most expensive tracksuit to buy. Like even like in bulk, like 50 tracksuits, it was the most expensive thing I've got. But it's the thing that I said at the beginning and in the description of my clothing brand. Mm -hmm. um, it's just always been quality over quantity. Yeah. And I said to my people, everybody that helps me with it and stuff, I said I'll pay whatever I need to pay, even if I'm making ten pounds off of the tracksuit. I'm not. I don't care about making money at the beginning. I just want to get my clothing out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't need an extra income at the moment. Maybe in the future I will, and hopefully this will be an extra income yeah. in the future. But like I said, quality. I will go for the best quality. I don't want to have nothing cheap. Of this course. is gonna. Then people are ringing me up needing a return and stuff like that. But this tracksuit, like I said, it's a good, good quality. Like you wash it, it's fine. And even me wearing it now, it just feels like a. Like a top tracksuit, like the, I came with a Valenciaga tracksuit, and it feels the same as that. Yeah. Look at you just, just like dashing all this name's Gucci and Valenciaga, and I'm just perfect, like, perfect, perfect. <laughs> I'm in Primark. <laughs> no, Primark's well, Primark the way forward, bro. Yeah. Now, you know what? Primark used to be back in the day, the quality wasn't that good, but now it's mad. I get my t shirts and stuff from there all the time, just white, yeah. plain black and white t shirts. Perfect. You make healthy save money. Well, yeah, so now I'm just moving on to like more fun stuff. Who's your favourite artist? Like, who do you listen to? Music artists. Yeah, music yeah. artists. Um, I've got a few, the thing is I've got a few friends um, from my area that are good. You might not have heard of them, but you could check them out after. Give them a little shout out. Them. Them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One, one, one of my boys called Pabs and another boy called Aki. Mm. Um, loads of people in my area. I'll probably miss someone out now and they'll get onto me. But yeah. People you will know. Yeah. Like, yeah. in the video. Like. I know, the video. Like, uh, uh, um, I've got a, a friend of mine, Young Bane, you know him? Yes. Yeah, him. He's coming, isn't he? Yeah. Come man. on, back to my people. Yeah, with him as well, like I said, I know him through when I was at West Ham. His mm. brother was at West Ham, he used to take him all the time, so I know him from then. And even with him, mm. the way he dresses, different. Wavy. But the way he dresses is hard. Wavy, like, man. I can't lie. And you probably don't even know, so I'm not saying it to him, but I'll say it now. Sometimes I look at his clothes and I think like, that inspires me as well. Yeah. The way he dresses, like, I've always said, even when I've shown my mates, I said he's, the way he dresses is yeah. hard because no one dresses like that. And I know for a fact so many people was laughing at what he was wearing. Mm -hmm. Like you know, like the baggy jeans, the ones that are open on the side. Everyone wears them now. Everyone does it. Like when um, I got on Instagram, I was like, what he wears, yeah. his hair, everything. He just I'll be honest, the, the jeans, like I used to wear just like normal casual jeans. Mm -hmm. All the jeans I have now at home are because of him. Oh, wow. like, that's a fact. Like that's not even. That's just me being real. Like when I first seen it, I thought it was a bit funky. 
And then after that, I just thought, no, that's hard, man. The way he dresses is different as well. Of course. You know that um, quote that said, first the love and then the copy? Exactly, that's yeah. It's that. the truth. That's how I put a pair of trainers <laughs> on my Instagram the other day. I said, laugh. I said, laugh now, appreciate later. Yeah. Because I know people will laugh, but even just with other stuff, you know, like the Balenciaga socks. The sock, oh, yeah, the sock yeah, yeah. I think they look horrible. I thought, when I, when I saw them at first, the ones with laces, I thought, mm. no, they're trash. But then I see a few people wearing them, I thought, you know what? I like it now. I thought they were alright. I can't no, lie. I, I don't like them. And this is the other one that looks like, it literally looks like toes. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, those ones are weird. They're dead, they're dead. They're dead, they're dead. That's the one that's dead. The other ones are right. The ones that you just slip on. They're trash. Well, yeah, you said you said Young Bang is one of your favourite artists. Who, any, like any American ones? Um, Little Baby. Yeah. Hard. Um, who else? Who else have been listening to? I used to listen to a lot of American rappers, but I'll come back over this side now. Mm. I, I, I think, especially the boys from London as well, like Fredo, Central City, mm. people like that, they're, they're doing their thing at the minute, man. So, they're smashing it. Yeah, you got to pick them up, yeah. yeah. What about anyone in commentary? Obviously, J1 from yeah. commentary, everyone knows him. I know him a bit, uh, I know him to say hello to you kind of thing, he knows a few of my people. He's doing well as well, so I'll pick him up as well, man. Of course, of course, 100%. It's nice to see as well, like, yeah, course, you're doing man. good, like, they're doing good. Yeah. And um, what is your favourite food, like your go-to meal? It's changed, man. When I was in London, when I was in London, it's just, it's just any Caribbean shop on there. Yeah. Like, oh, if I went to my nan's house, like my dad's side's Jamaican, my mum's side's Maltese. If I went to my dad's side when I was mm. more younger, it was more like, more yard food kind of thing. Yeah. And on my mum's side, it's just, it was more just like kind of normal food. Like, Sorry, so that's what you did. That's what you did. That's Jamaican and what's your mum? My mum's Maltese. Never heard of that. Yeah, I knew you'd say that. That's Have you guys heard of that? Never. Yeah, it's called, it's called Malta, Malta. Oh, uh, Malta. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a nice country to be fair. It's like a nice little mix. But yeah, my go to food has always been uh, Caribbean food, curry goat, something mm -hmm. like that. But now in Cov, I don't really see many places like that. I was thinking about like one day opening like a little Caribbean yeah. shop down there because I feel like Cov is nothing to eat, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just tea jars and that, really. yeah. all of that stuff. You have to go to Burnham to eat something like that. This is what I mean, like in Birmingham, you come to smelly candles. Every corner exactly, you've yeah. got joints. Exactly, yeah. But obviously, other than that, now, well, I haven't been eating too much. And that's not too good for you, either, Caribbean food. Yeah. There's so much for that, but, um, I don't know, man. Probably like just normal pasta, chicken. Yeah. I have chicken every day, like, I never drop that. I never become a vegetarian. <laughs> you know, chicken's nice, especially like at the minute I'm making that chicken salad. Yeah, I'm trying to put that chicken salad to fire. Yeah, good to go. And um, and what's your favourite Netflix series in the minute, like what are you watching? So there's a couple French players on my team. There's mm -hmm. something on Netflix called Lupin. Well, I call it Lupin. Yeah. But then when, it's, when I go in and say it, they're laughing at me. They say it's called Lupin, Lupin. Oh. But I've been watching that, that's hard. If you've not watched that, you need never to watch it. it. No, it's so sick, man. So Nella Rose talking about it. Yeah, you thing. know what it is, like, I never used to watch no films because like, I was just always out playing football. Mm -hmm. And then when I came to college, I was having more time on my hands. Everyone said, you've got to watch films, man. Like, yeah. And then I, started, I watched Power. Yeah, power was sick. Power, was power money heist, and that the uh, part that them three hard. Man. Yeah, I could watch them all again now. Do you think power though we started the first couple of seasons of it, and then seven and eight? I don't know what happened there, but yeah, exactly, exactly. It it. Yeah, and you see with me with power, everyone had watched it. So you see when I watched it, I could just watch all of them. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have to wait till the next week. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I was happy with that man. Like, with money heist, I had to wait every week. And then with this, the fire to wait a couple of times as well. But mm. there's another power as well. What is power the, the book or Yeah, the like one that. with, uh, is it Tyreek? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's good as well. Is man. it? Yeah, it's cool. I'm trying to, it just gets my nerve. I've got PTSD from hating it. <laughs> <laughs> in the actual one. So when I'm watching them, now. Yeah, I only lack certain okay. like, films and series. So it's hard for me to actually sit there and watch one. So if I watch one, I think it's a good one. Yeah, of course. But yeah, so that's all the fun facts. Now, uh, where do you see yourself in three years? So if you had to. Imagine yourself in three years, what do you see yourself? Optimistic, man. Big dreams. Yeah. I'd hope to see myself in the Premier League. I think I would have been if uh, not that one. Um, oh, I could have been there without my knee. Yeah. But no, like, I had a lot of teams interested in me before I got injured. I got injured literally two months before the January transfer window. And literally everybody was saying that I was going like, go to go to Leeds. Yeah. You know, to Leeds are in the Premier League now. But obviously everything happens for a reason. I'm happy at Cov and in three years I'd love to be in the Premier League with Coventry. That would be my dream. It's crazy because I'm not from Coventry, but it's the second team that I've played for. I've not been around and been played for like 12 different teams. So, professionally anyway, it's the second team I've played for. So, I'd yeah. like to be in the Premier League with Coventry. That would be, be a dream country. So, I don't really know a lot about football. So, just explain 
when you're playing for like a football team, how do you get into that Premier League? I don't know. You got like a leadership or this. I have no idea what, yeah. what happened. Just that like, I play certain matches. So in the in the English league, the main like four professional leagues is League Two, mm-hmm. League One, Championship, and Premiership. Yeah. So it's your League Two to the bottom, and that's where I was with Devon. Okay. Bridge. Um, which is a good level, like a professional football player, playing on TV, mm-hmm. uh, so even when I was playing there, like, and then if you're in League 2 or you're on FIFA, it's all the game. Oh, so obviously that's a dream come true, so yeah, when I was yeah. on that as well, I was I was happy man, and then I moved to Coventry in League 1, mm-hmm. and now we're in the Championship, we've moved up to the Championship, so we're one away from the Premier League. Oh, no, that's amazing, so from League 1 to 2, and then... Championship. <laughs> that's where you yeah, are. So that's what I'm saying to yeah. you. Like, a lot of the people that was at Chelsea, Arsenal, I could have been there with mm-hmm. them. I could have been there collecting crazy money like they did. But now they're coming down. Of course. And I've only been going up. And obviously at a young age, it's hard to say, I want to I wanna start at the bottom. But like I said, I had that mentality from young. I don't know how, maybe it come from my mum or my dad, but I just had that mentality that I want to start from the bottom and work my way up. That literally brings me to my next point because you said, being young at that age, you choosing starting from the bottom, it's mad because most young people that we know, like young guys, they want to, don't want to show it in it. Yeah, like, I've got this, about that. So, what advice would you give that the young boys, the young creatives that are watching? Forget about the socials, all that stuff, like putting in your bio, I play for Chelsea, I play for Arsenal, because reality is you're going to get great training there, mm-hmm. you've got good coaches, but when you get to 20, 21, there's going to be maybe one out of the 15 people in your age group, maybe not even one, mm. that will actually stay on and make it. So per- personally, the best thing to do is start from the bottom, play as many men's games as possible, yeah. like I have, because I've got like over 150 appearances now. Oh, that's well, like I said to you, the people that was at like Arsenal and Chelsea, they won't have no men appearance, men's appearances. Is yeah, that like when you're on the pitch? Yeah, like when you're playing professionally, so they're actually playing under 23s, yeah. which I would be playing if I was with them. But like I said, I chose to start from the bottom and play mm-hmm. men's football and get experience because now it's normal to me playing in front of loads of fans. Yeah. Whereas people that were doing that, it might not be that normal for them. So I'd say to do that, forget yeah. about the socials and telling everyone you play for Arsenal and Chelsea, start off at the bottom, mm-hmm. play as many games as possible, get that experience and then the money and it will come after. Of course, it's just about being patient. Yeah, patience, yeah. exactly that. 100%. So that was your goals for football in the next three years to play in the Premier League. Did I get it right? Yeah. Yeah. What's, what about your goals in your club and band in the next three years? Um, I don't expect it. You see me like um, Rome wasn't built in a day. Mm. That I don't expect it to just kick on straight away. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't expect to make any profit. That's what I set myself at first. So if I make three pound profit in a year, I'm happy mm. because I'm not expecting to make profit. I'm mm. investing my money into something just to get it out there and get people wearing it, like I said. So, like I said to you, I'm not trying to make a huge profit. I'm just trying to get my clothing brand out there. So, I'd just like to have a better website. Yeah. Um, get some more, like get involved with more people, like hire people and speak to a few people that um, have started their own clothing brands. Like I'd love to speak to Reese Rivara, the guy who's done Manny Devar. Yes, I know that thing. Because he was a football player. I was actually. So that's a bit of inspiration as well because obviously his football money must have helped him as well. Mm. That's got really big, like a lot of Yeah, people, crazy. Yeah. yeah, crazy. I played against him a few times, to be fair. And I think he stopped playing football to do that because it was kind of hard to juggle both. Mm. But the clothing brand was doing better than what he was doing in football. So that's, so, you yeah. know, playing. But yeah, just hopefully it just, it just kicks on a bit. Not too much, but. Of course, because just like you said with him, you could have managed for, but you admit it mean, for you, football your priority, 100%. and this is just to get your yeah. the name out there. Hundred percent. And yeah. obviously, in my spare time, I can kind of just even like you know when I'm travelling to a game on a coach, it's three hours. Mm. Like, what's going to stop me from drawing a few designs? Or, of course. Or looking through Instagram, looking at other people's ideas as well, not copying them, but taking ideas from other people, stuff like that. Of course. So I was looking at your sites um, of your clothing brand. I saw you do a lot of men's stuff. Is there any women's stuff or are you planning to do? Um, yeah, it's just, I'm, obviously I know a lot more males than females. Yeah. So at first, while I'm trying to get my stuff out there, I can give it to a lot of males to promote. Mm. So like I said, I don't really know. And I know a lot of males that have got a lot of followers on Instagram and mm. stuff like that. And I don't really know too many girls. So there will be girl stuff. This track is going to be unisex. Okay. And I've got a few like girls that I'm sending it to as well that are going to take pictures and, and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's mainly been men stuff, but yeah, girl stuff will come. 
I nearly did get a few girl things, but my dad patterned me like he just said, chill man, like you need to have the men <laughs> stuff sorted out first before you start trying to. Mm. And I, I just feel like it'd be harder to sell girls things. I don't, I don't know no, why. No, I think I think it's dang like I was looking. That's why I said I'm looking at you. So I was like, oh, there's no girl stuff. I was thinking mm-hmm. if you start getting like girls to do obviously the shoot, the videos, the yeah. photos. And obviously, you know how girls like to get hyped. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, of course, of course. But obviously, I know a lot more about men's clothes as well. Then, okay. I need to learn a bit more about girls' clothes, like what what, what you look wear and stuff mm. before I do it. But I definitely will do it. Hundred percent. Yeah, that's nice. So yeah, um, I think that comes to our final questions. Um, is there any other interesting fact you want to say to our people today? Or? I think I've pretty much said everything. Right? Yeah. So yeah, it was really nice meeting you today, Jody. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, thank you for watching the quarter mag. I'll see you guys later.